Okay, now we will now discuss about genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is a laboratory process by which your, you introduce deliberate changes into an individual's genome. So the gene can be altered and reinserted into an individual of the same species or the gene from a different species or even a, different, a totally different kingdom. For example, um, from, uh, from, a, from an animal to a, a bacteria or from an insect to a plant. So you have those uh, changes. You cannot do this in the, the normal selective breeding strategies, which is um, basically selective breeding is the older form of genetic engineering. You are trying to create uh, a, a species or a strain, but when you do it with selective breeding, you are just doing it naturally based on what uh, you are trying to uh, selectively breed in traits that you want and breed out traits that you do not want. But in genetic engineering, you are... You are actually more of, uh, it's, it's less of a, I, I cannot say it as a brute forcing, but uh, this one is much more um, high-tech, I guess. So you are actually um, cutting straightforward, it's very straightforward, you're just cutting the gene that you want and inserting it into the, uh, to the another species that you want it to receive. So this is, uh, it is one of the results of what we discussed from the previous lectures about um, cloning. So you cut a gene from one or uh, from one, the, the chromosome of one organism, you insert it to a vector, you insert a vector to a host, and now that host organism becomes what you call a genetically modified organism. Now, before I continue, I just want to uh, stress out that I am in no way um, promoting the use or the practice of uh, genetically modified organism or GMO products here. So we will just be discussing it in a neutral stance. So the most common GMOs are the bacteria and the yeast because of course they are far easier to manipulate. They're, uh, they're far easier to insert uh, recombinant plasmids and the vectors in bacteria and yeast rather than in the multicellular organisms such as plants or even animals. So some bacteria have been modified to produce medically important proteins such as human insulin. So this is for, uh, for uh, the medical, uh, before kasi, uh, human insulin, you cannot, uh, unless you kill a person, you cannot get insulin from them. So you uh, the, the, the original source of insulin are pigs. So they get insulin from slaughtered pigs. Now, um, since pigs, pig protein is a bit a little bit different than the human protein and there is a chance that there might have some uh, adverse uh, immune reaction to that so it's still the best to use the human insulin now the problem is unless again unless you kill a person you cannot you cannot get insulin natural in the natural way and the insulin that you will get in that is just a small amount now and then the demand is increasing because again the onset of diabetes so they uh, they create a cdna copy of the insulin gene and then they insert that cDNA into a bacteria. And then since bacteria are easier to produce, you get um, thousands, millions in a single culture. So each bacteria can now produce insulin. And you can have now industrial scale production of insulin. Now, do not worry because the insulin there is comes from the human uh, gene. So it's they are creating the human version of insulin. The only issue here is are they folded correctly? But anyway, so that's just another lecture altogether. But anyway, GMO produce enzymes. So not only insulin, but also enzymes. So for industrial scale production of enzymes, they again uses CDNA copies. So this GMO produce enzymes improve the taste and clarity of the beer and fruit juice, slow bread, staving, or modified fat. So usually these enzymes are mostly used in uh, the food industry. So this is an example of uh, bacteria. A bacterial culture so the these are bacillus bacteria so they are uh, they are sausage shape so elongated ones so when Nelson and Crick discovered the structure and function of the DNA it ignited a global blaze of optimism you have uh, modern techniques now allow an entire genome to be sequenced and modified we already discussed it in sequencing which brought up worries about the possibility of creating new and dangerous forms of life. Therefore, we have guidelines to restrict the design and the use of organisms to those that can survive only under a narrow set of laboratory conditions. 
So foreign and or modified genes can be introduced into a plant cells by way of electric or chemical shocks. So although we usually use uh, bacteria and yeast, single-celled organisms, but we can still um, expand the repertoire into multicellular organisms such as plants. That's why we have what you call designer plants. So the genes can be introduced Biologically, using a plasmid, it's the TI plasmid from uh, the bacterium, Argobacterium tumefaciens. It, it, con uh, it has the tumor-inducing genes. That's why it's called TI, tumor-inducing. So, the, uh, because of the tumor-inducing genes, they are able to modify plants, multiple multicellular organisms such as plants. Now, crop plants that are genetically modified produce more food at a, at a lower cost. That's why there's a rise of the GMOs. So, because again they are modified, they had greater resistance to disease or herbicides because they in, uh, they insert the genes that um, that allows them to either be resistant to this disease or the resistant to the herbicides or they can produce their own pesticide that will kill off the pest. That's one of the actually the first um, known GMO, which is the BT corn. They inserted uh, a gene there. That gene encodes for a pesticide that kills off. Um, what is that um, pest name? Again, the horn borers. So it kills off the horn borers. So the, the, the plant itself is producing pesticide. Now, what, what about us? We are eating the, the horn now. Does that mean that we are also uh, eating the pesticide? Yes, we are, in, uh, we are consuming the pesticide as well. Now, for the BT corn, the pesticide that they inserted is um, deactivated in our stomachs. So it, we do not necessarily um, poison ourselves. We are, we are eating corn every day almost. Uh, there are a lot of um, people peddling corn in the streets and you, are, you do not go, really feel sick. Now, the reason for that is because the pesticide is uh, chosen because it does not harm humans. That is for BT corn. Now, there are many other GMOs now. There are many different... Um, uh, of course, uh, different types of plants which will have each of them different pests. And a different pest, that means a different type of pesticides. Now, though, the reason why people are very um, against GMO is because, well, when you alter those um, organisms, one of the reasons is because um, some of the pesticides that they include in, uh, in order to make that crop more resistant to the pest is um, might or might not harm the humans. So there is, uh, we, well, you do not know exactly what that is. That's one thing. The second one is, is does the pesticide that they included there is, um, can it harm us? Short term, long term, we do not know, really. We really do not know, especially in the long term part, because um, the GMO is quite recent. Uh, only in the, uh, it started in this generation or in the previous generation only. So we still have, uh, we still do not know or characterize exactly the long-term effects. There, uh, there is no particular study yet, or at least the study about that has. Uh, there is a limited study on that. Now, not only um, pesticides can be inserted, you can also modify the genes to become drought resistant. Other genetic modifications can add more nutrients to the plants, such as if you have heard about the golden rice. It was produced by IRI, International Rice Research Institute in Los Baños, in Laguna. So, uh, they, they wanted to add um, beta-carotenes, they wanted to include uh, riboflavins, vitamins in the rice, because again, rice is a staple plant. So they want to um, produce a rice that can, um, uh, they want to produce a rice that has this necessary vitamins. And because some of the poorer countries, they cannot, they can only afford to eat rice and no other. So rice as by itself is not, is usually just carbohydrate rich. It lacks vitamins. So you, in, you add vitamins in there so that you will have a healthier population. So that's one, gene one well, at least for me, it's, I think it's good genetic modification so it actually um, increased nutrition in the plants now this is an example of what i call about uh, corn borders so especially here you have the pt corn on the left and the normal corn on the right and this corn is plagued by the corn borders so corn borders are very uh, large was a large problem a very um, headache inducing problem way back before the 
develop the BT corn because again, whole fields of um of maize can be uh, decimated because of this pest. So this is your Tumefacens bacterium that uses your TI plasmid. So they infect the plants first and then they carry it more on the seedlings. So uh, aside from plants, you can also have animals. So first, genetically modified animals were mice using medical research as models of human disease. So that these transgenic mice are used for knockout experiments. So they, when, they sound, when we say knockout experiments, they knock out genes to determine their functions. Because one way to know the importance of something is to lose it. So they just uh, knock out the genes and then if something goes wrong, ah, this is important for that. So basically, that's something like that. And aside from that, they have uh, mice that have cancer, mice that have diabetes, mice that have um, diseases, so on and so forth. So they model um, human diseases into mice and then they study on how to um, cure those diseases. So the drugs that you have in the market are, are a product of that. Genetically modified animals can also make proteins with medical industrial applications. So transgenic goats produce proteins used to treat cystic fibrosis, heart attacks, and blood uh, clotting disorders. So another way of using animals or genetically modified animals is that um, you induce them to produce proteins. Just like how you induce bacteria to produce insulin. So in this case, you are using, instead of bacteria, you are using uh, animals now as the producers and uh, the idea here is to for example for animals that produce milk especially uh, the mammals of course the goats the sheep they uh, the idea is for them to produce um, products especially uh, antibodies proteins uh, because antibodies is difficult to produce in uh, in a prokaryotic system bacteria cannot do that because the antibodies are very complex type of proteins they are uh, multi subunit proteins they they need to be folded in a certain way they need to be assembled in a certain way and bacteria cannot do that uh, what can do that are only eukaryotic systems specifically uh, of course the goats the sheep and so on even chickens actually um one of the projects in UP is to use um chickens to produce um your um uh, your antibodies now uh W would we kill those animals that produce them? Actually, the, the reason for this biotech barnyard is that these uh, animals should produce the proteins that you want, these, um, these monoclonal antibodies, in their milk. So you do not necessarily kill the animals, you just milk them. So their milk has those proteins that you can just purify if you want or just or give them to the animals a drink. And then for the chickens, if those... Um, those proteins are produced in their eggs. So you have eggs that produce antibodies, or rather that contain antibodies in them. Okay, so basically that's the idea for biotech partners, and they are actually currently being studied right now. So here is a, trans a trans transgenic goat that can produce antithrombin, which is an anti-clotting protein. So usually they use them instead of the bacteria because the proteins are very complicated and difficult for bacteria to synthesize. Now, can some GMO animals used for human food? Uh, as far as I know, it's not recommended because, again, we, they, they modified something there, so we still do not know if there's any lasting effects for us. So genes have been manipulated in animals to study human diseases, which, of course, raises ethical dilemmas, speci specifically the, human, uh, the animal rights. Uh, I, for one, I am not really fond of uh, of that field of research because I, I hate um, I hate dealing with animals. I hate killing animals after I use them. I, I do not like doing that. So controversy in GMO production and use, you have different sides with each of them def uh, the vested interest. So you can look at Greenpeace, which is the movement that is totally against GMO. And of course, the, the large companies the agricultural producers that are pro gm not of not all of them are pro gmo but mostly some of them use as gmos because again these are cheaper these they produce better yield you do not have to worry about pests so on and so forth now on the other side let's look at the field of medicine gene therapy is uh, the transfer of recombinant dna into body cells to correct a certain genetic defect or diseases usually congenital diseases or even um 
a disease that uh, that has a problem. Uh, for example, you have a malfunctioning gene, so you can correct them. So they use viral vectors or lipid clusters to insert unmutated gene into your individual chromosome. So you want to correct a gene, uh, and you insert now the correct gene into your system. Now the problem with here is because in gene therapy, it's risky. Uh, gene therapy has not been uh, used. There are only several cases and most of them ended badly because the genes are inserted in the wrong positions. So instead of curing the disease, they, they introduced a, a whole different type of disease. So that's the problem. We cannot control the genes where, uh, where to insert the genes. That is until we discovered CRISPR. CRISPR is a new method which type of a restriction enzyme that is guided by DNA. That is guided to DNA by a piece of RNA. So I believe I included um, a segment about CRISPR in the last week's lecture. So the CRISPR produces a way to actually control where to insert the gene, and that in doing so, you you should you are no, no longer um, leaving it to chance where it might be inserted anywhere, and it might even activate an oncogene. Now, since it's more accurate, so you can now again control, but. Right now, they are still understudied, so they want to control it first before doing actual human studies. So this is uh, genome editing. You want to change your uh, genes. So this is a CRISPR system. So you have a variety of applications, crop modifications, removing mutations or enhancing traits, and gene dives. Again, when you do enhanced traits, especially for humans, we are now looking into eugenics. And that is another whole lot of kind of worms to open. So um, again, it's more of ethical and moral issues as well as scientific issues. So you have um, this a way. This should we or should we not edit our own genomes? Should we just limit the editing to curing diseases, or we can just prevent? Uh, the idea is uh, should we prevent it before it happens? So you edit the g the genome of a, an, of a fetus when it's still a fertilized egg or a blastocyst or well, something like that. So again, that's another kind of worms and that is a different issue of uh, eugenics altogether. Okay, so that's it for this lecture.